with getting those things more easily in the U.S. also comes a very hectic, stressful environment of work, work, work. And so if you want to move to a place that doesn't have that kind of environment because you want that like great quality of life, well, there are some things you have to sacrifice and that might be the fact that you have to wait for your plumber. So I would say if you want a relaxed lifestyle, you might have to relax a little bit. Hey, Pablo, so excited to have you back again and excited to talk about how to adjust to a new culture. How are you doing today? We're doing great. I'm so excited to be here again. Today, I'm in San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. So that's that beautiful view Ooh. here. If you haven't visited Nicaragua, Nicaragua <laughs> has some amazing places for you guys to travel and visit. This is just one of my favorite spots. And uh, Let's get into topic, how to adjust to a new culture. That's a lot of people don't, don't even think about these things. Right. It's so true. I, I think sometimes people are so excited to move somewhere. Maybe they've had a great tourist experience somewhere, but that's very different than like settling in. Right. So um, I figure you're probably someone with a lot of even if you haven't done this a, a whole lot of times yourself, which I think you have, um, you walk and talk with people who are doing this all the time, right? So uh, you've heard the stories, um, probably good and bad, I'd imagine, right? There's, there's a lot to learn. And I actually moved, uh, lived in the United States, Costa Rica and Panama in my life. So I've been in three mm -hmm. different countries. And of, and of course, I do travel. And from my customer base and all of, all of the people that we help move, we notice there's a lot of people that's got a big, big challenge adjusting to the culture. This is something that it's a given. It's going to happen. People don't even, they don't realize how difficult this is because it's invisible. I mean, you, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of other things are very obvious. You need a house. You need to do immigration, maybe. You need to, you know, get adjusted to a local community. You don't where to go and shop your groceries. But there's so many things that are invisible to your eyes that you don't know that you're going to have an issue with that. Um... Uh, Let's give us, let's give some examples. Right. Uh, one to me, kind of the most common when people move to a country that is uh, like in Latin America, that is uh, the pace of life is different. If you're coming from a big city, you know, things are super fast. You go to work, you clock in, you clock out, you go back. Then you get into traffic for an hour or two. Uh, you get to home and maybe watch some next week and it goes to the next, to the next day. And that's the cycle. But when you're living in a small community, maybe, I mean, just to put some, some context, uh, San Juan del Sur probably is maybe a hundred thousand people. It's a, it's a small, okay. uh, what Miami, if you live in Miami, uh, what 4 million people are searching this the other day, I was doing some Googling. So city Miami, 4 million people. Small town in Costa Rica, Nicaragua, uh, maybe Playa del Carmen. I uh, was doing this search the other day, 250,000 people in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. But you're coming from a city that is almost four or five million people. So the rhythm, it's a different thing. It's a different lifestyle. So just the rhythm of life are going to make a big impact on how you perceive things. You need to set your expectations that things are going to be much more slower. So... You're used to right. getting on the phone and getting somebody to answer right away. Maybe it's not the case in Latin America. Maybe you have to wait until the next day to get a reply. And I'm not saying that's good or bad customer service. It's just in general, things right. are at different mm -hmm. pace. Uh, people's got, people down here in, in our countries in Latin America, they just have another rhythm. Panama, it's kind of like, it's exactly what I'm saying. A lot of people complain about moving to Panama. Mm -hmm. Panama because they said the customer service is not there or is very little customer service. And I find out that this just kind of like the culture is like that. Uh, they right. get an email, uh, they go get some coffee, they're, it's relaxed, it's more, you know, <laughs> it's just another rhythm. So I think that's one of the biggest things, that rhythm. In fact, in Costa Rica, because we have in Costa Rica this saying, it's called Pura Vida which is pure life. The little, little translation for that is pure life. Uh, a lot of gringos, mm -hmm. North Americans, Canadians, they come in this fast pace expecting that everything is gonna happen yesterday. I need a new fridge. Yeah. I wanna hear now. No, it's not gonna be now. You, not even if you are paying. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of people think, oh, I'm paying for this. I should be getting it right now. But our, our mm -hmm. rhythm in general 
Uh, once again, I'm not saying this is good or bad customer service. Whoever figures out how to run a business in Latin America that gives this immediate delivery of anything, you know, 20, a 24 seven delivery, just like Amazon. If anybody figures this out in Latin America, they could probably be rich because it's not insistent. Right. Even if you wanted to, because right. the labor force is just a complete different rhythm. I think that's one of the big differences in Spain is that there's just a relaxed, uh, more relational culture. And that means that like you in the it. US, if you need a plumber and it's an emergency, you can get somebody like that. And maybe you pay a little bit more for that emergency service. But in Spain, you better use the bathroom at somebody else's house because there is no way. There's just, you're not going to have that availability. And it's just different. And it's not that it's bad. It's just that they prioritize different things. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it is an adjustment. And I think when you're preparing for that, you also have to prepare to become a more patient person and understand that that's something you'll have to work on and that that doesn't make that culture bad in that area. You might have the preference of, oh, it's so much easier back home because it's so much faster. But with getting those things more easily in the U.S. also comes a very hectic stressful environment of work, work, work. And so if you want to move to a place that doesn't have that kind of environment because you want that like great quality of life, well, there are some things you have to sacrifice. And that might be the fact that you have to wait for your plumber. <laughs> so so um, that's, that's what I think anyway. That's one of the lessons I've learned. So I would say if you want a relaxed lifestyle, you might have to relax a little bit. You have to relax if, if that's what you want. <laughs> right, and a lot go. of people, a lot of people, they, a lot of people come to Costa Rica or to Panama to relax, to retire. But if that's what you want, you need to make some adjustments to your expectations. Uh, that's kind of like right. part of it. The big, the, the one thing I want to let our audience know is, do not take this from, uh, do not forget about these things. Do not forget that you might have a big uh, cultural shock. And start looking for these gaps mm -hmm. in the culture as early as possible. So you can make the adjustments if you need to make the adjustments. Or you could decide not to move to Costa Rica. You might want to decide to move to Cancun, right. Mexico, which is a little bit more like a resort type of community. Uh, you know, more American standard, you know, type of restaurants and sure. hotels. And so they on cater so. to the tourists. So, but it's more expensive. No, no, there's, there's many good good about right. things on, on every on everything <laughs> everything you can you can get you can get a place like cancun more americanized tourist type or you can be more relaxed in costa rica but it's anyway do not forget about the intercultural challenges are they're gonna come it's there mm -hmm. one one thing i see that a lot of people complain about is in because there is a lot of informal businesses so there's less formality so you're mm -hmm. gonna let's say you need a plumber, mm -hmm. and I'm sure this is this might be the case in Spain. Correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but you need a plumber, <laughs> and then you search online for a plumber. You ask around, uh, they, they they may not even have an email for business because they don't do business through an email. But maybe they only have WhatsApp. Okay, and that's the most formal thing they mm -hmm. do. And I, and they send you this is my price, but they don't send you a quote or a proposal or an invoice. They're just gonna say something like ten dollars an hour or Oh, it's going to cost you $80 or 80 euros, whatever it might be. So it's very informal, mm -hmm. just a little text. And if they have an email, it's going to be something like the plumber123 at yahoo.com. So they don't have the mentality <laughs> of having a business that is registered, a brand, the formality, the processes. Sure, right. And this is most of the business, most of the small business that are mom and pop businesses in Latin America and these small communities are going to be like that. Um, because there is no need for these people. They don't have the need. They are always busy. And even with that, they're, they could be busy doing their own thing. And if they're not as busy, anyway, their lifestyle mm -hmm. is not expensive. So they, don't, they could work three days a week fixing here and there. And that's, that's, that's enough. They don't have this capitalism mentality that it's in, in the U.S. that you have to work 60 or 70 right. hours to drive the brand new truck 
we don't have that like most people do not really care about driving yeah. that, that that fancy pickup truck as a contractor uh so you see them coming in their bicycle you know or maybe in a small little car uh <laughs> to fix your your the plumbing on your house and they say oh i'm gonna be there tomorrow at 7 a.m and it's noon and they're not there yet because they stop by somebody else's house they forget they have to pick up something once again that's not good it's not not acceptable like i don't have that in my business by the way we have processes systems and mm -hmm. li little customer service department <laughs> uh we have people we have but i notice i notice that's what a lot of people complain about complain about they most people sure. most people yeah. care more about their relationships this is why i said you nail it because in latin america mm -hmm. People would rather spend more time with their kids than making an extra buck. For that sure. that means that you can have this fancy project and you can say, well, this project is ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars, and they could say, yes, of course. How long is it going to take you? And and then you want it done in thirty days because you know that's possible in Florida. Maybe that's possible possible in the U.S., but in Spain or Costa Rica, they're going to say, no, it's going to be three months. And then, okay, see, right. <laughs> why? Because at 4.35, they're going to be getting their tools, picking everything up because they want to go to their brother's house to get a glass of sangria and have some good friend, because, <laughs> so have some good time with their friends. And that's kind of like the things you need to, you need to adjust. So in that, in that, in the same, in that, in the same th thought is, we are more relation, relational type, more family oriented. You can come to us last minute. Uh, We're closing at five. You can come to us, you know, 10 minutes to five and you're going to get more likely, yeah, I'm sorry, well, I'm about to close. You can come back tomorrow. And that right. could be in restaurants, <laughs> coffee places, any place. While in a place like in the United States, if, if you are in before the hour, you are being served until you go. Um, you could be, you could be doing right. dinner, right. and then if they're closing at 11, 11 p.m., you get there five minutes before the hour. If you get in, you get served until midnight. It, it's just, it's just, right. it's more business oriented. So they they appreciate more that extra income than just having their employees go home, mm -hmm. relax, uh, or rest for the next day. So that's not the case in a lot right. of our countries uh, in Latin America. That's I seen a lot of people complain about that, but. You just need to really prepare for these things. A lot of times you have to deal with public institutions. So another good thing is if you have to go to a public institution in Costa Rica, in the U.S., I remember going to the DMV, getting a renewal of the driver mm -hmm. license, uh, maybe yeah. two hours. If there is no line, 15 minutes. If there is a lot of line, two, three hours. But in Costa Rica, it's going right. to be half day, six hours, four hours. Uh -oh. There's always going to be a huge line. There is no, there is no a mm. DMV in every county or, no, it's just one DMV in San Jose and people travel hours to get there. Maybe a few other ones in the other bigger cities, but that's it. For the entire country, wow. maybe three or four options for people to, but now, now there, there is more of it, but traditionally that's kind of like the case with many of these public services. Sure. So what you need to do if you're going to this, you know, any public office is Get there very early. Try to be the first person. And if not, relax. Get your cell phone. Get a book for you to read. Sit down and enjoy your book for a few hours. Because that's what's going to happen. Don't stress. Just relax. Mm -hmm. If you want to you wanna have this lifestyle, just relax. That's, that's, that's what's part of the investment you need yeah. to kind of have this mind shift. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the things that I've noticed over my time in Spain is that at first, when those situations came up, I would be frustrated, like really frustrated and really stressed. And after a while, I came to realize that if I'm frustrated and stressed, the only person that that's impacting is me because they're going to do what they're doing just the same way that they've always done it. And I'm not going to change yeah. that. And I, it's not that I was necessarily trying to change that, but I was, I was like carrying that around sometimes some real stress over these situations. And on this last trip, when I was supposed to get my car back in two days and then didn't have it for a month and a half, I just said, well, yeah, well, that's what, that's the way it goes. And, and it's so much better for me 
for me, like, forget everyone else. They're not impacted by that. But it's better for me to just relax, really, <laughs> like to say, I'm not going to carry that around. It's just the way that it is and move on. Because if I'm getting frustrated, it doesn't benefit anyone. And so I think that preparing yourself really mentally and emotionally for that and knowing what you might be facing, depending on what country you're going to, it might not always be, this might not always be the scenario, but there will be things like this that you have to kind of mentally and emotionally prepare yourself in advance for if you can, or understand that it's coming and that it may take some time to adjust. So I've done some kind of mission trip sort of things to Haiti and led a couple of trips and led other people and have learned about reverse culture shock, which is when you come home. And it's so funny that there are literally this list of things that happen. And it's like every person goes through it. It doesn't matter who you are. Every person can go through this reverse culture shock and what the symptoms are. And it's like, you wow. Like, especially as an American, if you travel to uh, maybe a country that's a developing country and you've just witnessed the, you know, the things that they're going through and then you come home and you see someone maybe that's pushing their dog around in a stroller or just some extreme example of, uh, you know, that you would never see that in these other places that you visited. And so when you see that, you may get angry and then you go through these steps of like, first I'm angry and then I'm trying to tell everyone everything that's wrong with America because I've been, you know, to this other place and I'm so mad. And if you only knew, but, and then you realize that none of those people care because they haven't been there and they haven't seen what you've seen. And then you kind of feel <laughs> isolated and alone for like, but everybody goes through these steps. Wow. It's just amazing. Like the psychology of it and how we're all kind of wired in the same way. And then, we all have to process these things and we may process them a little bit differently, but you kind of, and I would just watch these people every time go through these steps. And then after a couple of months, you get used to being back home. You're not so upset anymore. You're not thinking about it as much anymore. And so I think the same thing when you're going somewhere, you may experience some culture shock and feel like there are things that really have you emotionally wrapped up. But I think more than anything, time is what kind of heals that, you know, or helps you to adjust to that. You just you you begin to adjust and um, you get used to it over time. And then maybe you forget that you were ever bothered by those things. At least that's my opinion on that. You know, I see, you know, another very common. I'm just trying to go through different cases of very common things why people get upset mm -hmm. and they have this intercultural shock. Uh kind of with the culture, at least on the countries I am based, Mexico, Latin America. One of the things you see when you find a provider oftentimes is yes to everything. Yes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I hear this, that at least Costa Ricans, they don't like the confrontation to say no. Uh, it's kind of like very particular uh -huh. to, to... So you get a customer and, and the customer says, I have this house, can you paint it in a week? Can you have it ready in seven days? And oftentimes you're going to get, yes, no problem. No problem. Yes. <laughs> uh, but that's not true. It's not true. It's just kind of like a reflex. It's like a reflex answer. And instead of a week, mm -hmm. it takes two weeks. And then you as the customer, you didn't realize this. You, you, you don't understand the culture. Then you're frustrated. That's one. And the mm -hmm. other thing is, like you mentioned, this could go, it could go the other way. So it could be too relaxed in Latin America, or it could go the opposite way, too intense. Let's say you're moving to Germany. Let's say you're moving to England, uh, where everything is mm -hmm. super punctual on the clock. Uh, the mail post service yeah. is known by to take no more than 24 hours. You mail a letter. It has to be there next day. Uh, so everything is planned around that type of timing. If for any reason you're coming from a country where things are more relaxed, then you're moving into a country where things are more strict, you need to adjust to that. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of problems. You're going to have a lot of people frustrated about you and who you are and your approach. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. just, it goes the, it goes two ways, either too stressed or too strict right. or too relaxed or too calm or pura vida, like we said here in, Costa, here in Costa Rica. You know, I think we've talked about some things that, people can prepare for 
mentally and emotionally, like knowing, hey, this is coming. What are some, are there any practical things you can think of that that's someone can do to prepare for the adaptation process to a new culture or a new country? You have to do a little search about what are those differences uh, and see if you are able to entertain that. Be honest with yourself. Let's see if you're able to entertain entertain this this intercultural differences because they're going to happen. So research is the next step. Uh, now, one one that is huge is the language. So a lot of people forget about the language. They just think, oh, everybody speaks English. But that's not the case. Believe me, I understand. I understand. You might think everybody speaks English, but no, everybody do not speak English. Most people, when you go and travel, and then you go into a hotel or a restaurant in a touristy location, most of those employees are going to be trained or are going to be hired because they are bilingual and they speak English. But when you go outside of that little exactly. bubble, we call this the, bomb, the, mm-hmm. the gringo, the gringo bubble. When you go outside the bubble, then you realize. <laughs> Most people do not speak the local language. So prepare, look for, yeah. you know, some Duolingo, the app, look for some Spanish classes if possible. I would say look for the most practical things uh, to learn in another language. So I've been broadcasting these uh, Spanish classes uh, on Wednesdays. And our professor says something like this. You only need to learn 20% of the language to build 80% of the practical sentences that you need. So it's not like you need to learn 100% of the language. Just learn what you're going to need to use in, in a, on a regular basis, things for you to eat, to go out, to, you know, what you need for the most practical things. And with that as a base, then it's easier for you to communicate. But prepare for the language because it's going to happen. Yeah, for sure. That makes a lot of sense. I think uh, one of the things in working in the field that I've worked in with a nonprofit, we've seen them send Americans to certain countries. We don't do as much of that anymore, but, um, you know, maybe a family is going to live somewhere where they're planning to work with the local people there for five, 10 plus years. And most sending agencies I feel now have learned if you want people in for the long haul for the first year all they're doing is language learning. Like, oh my God. They are, that, you know, I mean, that's what a lot of the focus has to be. If you are really in it for the long term, then that's so important because people will go start to try to do work and just everything kind of crumbles if you can't communicate. Um, and that can be whether that's practically things can not be great, but also mentally and emotionally, if you can't connect to the community. I think a lot of places have plenty of expats, like I'm connected to tons of expats in Spain, and I feel a lot of community there. Uh, But I want to not only connect with expats when I'm there, I want to connect with the locals and I need to learn Spanish in order to do that, which is why I need to attend your free classes on Wednesday nights. (laughs) Uh, is yeah. that is that right? Are y'all doing some sort of is it like a Zoom call or how? What it's are those just a, like broadcast Facebook Live, YouTube Live broadcast on Wednesdays. We cool. haven't start for this year, but hopefully, you know, uh, okay. everybody will will start re re up that, that again. Something else that I that I do think happens a lot is you go through this. Oh, everybody talks about this this honeymoon phase when you're moving it to this other country and you're you're. You know, you're making a lot of decisions because you're in this phase in love with Spain or with Costa Rica or with Nicaragua. And I do I do notice uh, right. that a lot of people will, I'm going to give this example uh, for, for Unicol. Let's say Unicol goes <laughs> to Spain and you create yourself a circle of other expats or other people around you. But it's because they are North Americans and they speak English. But oftentimes the people that you connect with in this in this place in Spain may not be the, may not be the same type of people you connect with your own circle in the U.S. with with your own friends. Uh, mm-hmm. What do I mean by that? Uh, we we notice uh, people come to Costa Rica. They sit down in a bar in a restaurant, start talking to somebody next to them. Oh yeah, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from I don't know Chicago. I'm from California, and they're just making friends to another fellow American. Uh, 
but one person mm -hmm. is perhaps a retired a retired CEO of a large corporation, and the other person is a professional gambler. You see what I'm trying to say? Right. <laughs> see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's, 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 they wouldn't be friends exact, if they were in the U.S. <laughs> right? yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people make a lot of bad decisions, uh, surround themselves mm -hmm. with other people, even within this, even if they are from the same country, they speak the same language, uh, just because they speak the same language. And I think this may mm -hmm. not be an intercultural issue. I think this is more like what happens when you move to another place and you want to connect with other people and all you have is, you know, a big variety of type, type of people and you need to be selective, just like how you are in your own country. And then you, I don't know, I think I'm going right. to another another topic here, but I've seen that and i see <laughs> people getting in trouble because of these things. Another Another one like that is they come to Costa Rica or to Panama, get on a taxi, get on the cab, start talking to the taxi driver, and all of a sudden the taxi driver becomes the real estate agent. You will not do that if you're moving to <laughs> another city in the U.S. Uh, so people start right. making some crazy nonsense decisions. But, I mean, you want to have a real estate agent, look for uh, somebody that has reputation, that has got the certifications, that has got, you know what I mean? Uh, and now they, mm -hmm. they, they travel to Nicaragua and they get into San Juan del Sur, they talk to the waitress, and now the waitress is their legal advisor. Like, bah, what do you mean? <laughs> so, so, and I think this happens a lot because we are new to a new town. We want to connect with people. We want to make friends. But we need to be selective and have the same common sense you have in your own community, whatever it, whatever it may be. Costa Rica, Panama, Spain. You want to have sure. this kind of same common sense. Do your due diligence. Do the research. It doesn't matter who you use as a source or service provider. Search for you know, accreditation, search for referrals. That's the only way to do it properly. In Costa Rica, in Spain, or in Florida. Right. It doesn't matter. Well, this has been fun conversation. Um, for those listening, definitely check back with us next week. We're going to be talking about building a community and um, what that's like for expats. So thanks so much for being here, Pablo. It was a lot of fun chatting with you. And, Thank you so uh, much. It's been a pleasure. Look forward to next time.